made all this progress to stop me if you know I'm this for my time. I don't have the patience and I got to get far, far away and I'm not too big about you anymore and I've moved on now so I've got home and life. here on our uh, music ethnography project talking to a, uh, a real rock and roll musician. Why don't you uh, tell the folks home a little bit about yourself, what you do. Um, hi, uh, my name is Sam. I um, have been playing guitar since I was uh, very young. I picked it up when I was uh, nine. Um, and. Uh, I've had a few different projects. Um, I've worked on uh, a lot of uh, solo music. Um, I've played in uh, several different bands, um, most notably uh, Red Ladder, featuring uh, this gentleman right here, um, which was uh, de definitely the uh, that was definitely the highlight of my music making um, experiences. Oh, yeah. um, Good I had a lot of fun with that. <laughs> um, I also uh, I I build guitars. I modify them. Um, I've done uh, technician work. Um, just because guitar is a really big part of my life, and I love it, inside and out. All right, so let's get right down to it. Let's do it. Uh, so first of all, how did you first get into playing music? What uh, particular song or artist is what? made you uh you know want to get into doing that hmm. i would say what made me want to pick up a guitar was um probably probably when i first started uh playing guitar hero the game <laughs> the the songs in that game were honestly uh my first real um that was like my first experience with classic rock. I had never really listened to classic rock before. The only band that I had ever really listened to before then was Foo Fighters, which oh, yeah. of course are my favorite band and are probably still my favorite band today. Yeah, it's it's funny how music works. Uh, it's It always seems like the first music that you listen to seems to stick with you. What, what was that first Guitar Hero game that you got? The first Guitar Hero game that I got was Guitar Hero 3 <laughs> um, in 2007. I play Guitar Hero 3 all the time. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I it's a it. <laughs> fantastic game. Awesome soundtrack. They could not have picked better songs for that game. For real. Except Raining Blood. Not for me. Mm. We're not going to get into that. Uh, Alright. How did the music that your friends and family like at a young age, how did that influence the music that you listened to? Um, well, I, I, I guess, uh, like I said, my favorite band as a kid being the Foo Fighters, um, my, my parents were really into them for a while, um, uh, when they, around when they came out with their In Your Honor album in 2005, oh, yeah. um, my parents and their friends were, like, all about the Foo Fighters for, for a little while, and that's really when I, when I started listening to them, right. um. And of course, that was the first album I heard was In Your Honor. Oh, yeah. And I was, I was all about that. I had the CD. I listened to it all the time. For sure. That's a legendary album. It's fantastic. Masterpiece. All right. Uh, digging into some more cultural topics. Do you ever wish that you knew more about musical cultures, like, in other places around the world, so that you could maybe interpret or utilize their instruments or musical ideas into your own music? Yeah, I, I mean, for sure. Um, 
I'm always interested in listening to uh, music of, you know, music from other uh, places and cultures. It's the thing that's almost kind of difficult is uh, knowing where to look for music like that. You know, right. I, it's it's tough. You can't really just go into into Spotify and find like authentic music from anywhere in the world. Right. You know, there's definitely a lot of cultures that it's it's def it's hard to find. Um, True music. What was the name of that one band from, like, China that you listened to a while back? The super, super hardcore band from China. There were a couple. There was Maximum the Hormone. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> which had a, a couple really good songs. Um, they were around in, like, the early 2000s. There was also uh, Chthonic. I'm not sure if that's how it's pronounced. Um <laughs> But th they were, I think they were a Taiwanese metal band yeah. that I was really into for a while. Nice. <laughs> it's it's always fun to listen to, particularly I love listening to metal from all sorts of different, uh, all sorts of different places. Oh yeah, um, for real. It's super interesting seeing, like, listening to those bands from China, like, that metal compared to what we have in the States. It's a totally dip. like, it's different but it's not at the same time. It's... It's just really heavy. Like it's yeah. insane. <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting to see everyone everyone's take on yeah. very heavy music. Um, French metal is really good too. I'm a huge fan of uh, Gojira. Oh yeah. Um, and oh man, who else? There's Swedish metal. There's so much Viking metal that's awesome. Mm. I feel like uh, that's a very under underappreciated <laughs> genre of metal in oh, the yeah. states. <laughs> All right. Has um, <clears throat> so you also play sitar? Um, Correct. Has learning sitar improved your appreciation for other cultures' music? Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, I always, I always did have uh, a lot of appreciation for uh, Indian music in particular. It was right. always, always one of my favorites, along with, along with uh, traditional Chinese music. Mm. Um, but. Uh, it definitely, I definitely have uh, a lot of appreciation for uh, Indian music and just trying to learn the very, very basics of Indian music theory. It's a completely different oh, music entirely, theory. Yeah. It's nothing like what we have here. Right. Um, and it's it's crazy just to look at that and look at the differences. Mm -hmm. And um, that's definitely, I'm very happy that I decided to try to learn sitar because I did learn a lot about music. Yeah, that that's crazy. That it's really impressive. Like, I, I've Thank never you. even played a sitar. I've never even picked one up. It's very difficult. I, I never <laughs> never really could get the hang of it that well, but I could play it a little bit. Um, so that kind of leads into the next question. Did you ever consider writing sitar music into, like, a rock song? It's something that I definitely thought about, but I I don't think I ever really could convince myself that I could pull it off. That's, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's tough to do without without being really cheesy. That's not the music that I know how to write. Like, yeah, if we Same. ever if we ever put sitar in a song, I don't think it would sound very authentic. No, we're we're no. not. We're definitely not the Beatles or the Moody Blues <laughs> or Robbie Shankar. <laughs> I definitely don't think I could do justice to the instrument. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't think I could write a song that it would fit into very well. No, definitely. <laughs> uh, so, what instrument did you always wish that you played that you never got around to learning how to play? <sighs> um, definitely piano. Yeah. I. I still. I tell myself one of these days I'm gonna get a, a nice keyboard, a nice enough keyboard that to where I would really enjoy to play it. Yeah. And uh, I definitely think. I tr definitely believe one day I will, at some point, learn. By the end of my life, I would. I know I I'll hope know so. how to play piano. I'm in, I'm in class piano one next semester, so I'm I'm starting the long trek up the mountain too. <laughs> it's uh, it's interesting. It's uh, it's very different. I know I know how to play Hallelujah. That's it. <laughs> I, at at one point, I though, I could play that whole song all the way through, then I forgot the words, and then I forgot how to do it. <laughs> um, do you think that learning more instruments makes you a better musician overall? 
Well, it's really kind of hard to say what a good musician is right. or what a better musician is. Um, but I do think if you are a musician who's looking to expand your horizons and uh, try some new things, I think um, it's absolutely essential. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, you need to know more than, more than one or more than a few instruments if, if you really want to be, I don't know, it depends on what kind of musician you want to be, really. It does. It depends. Yeah, there's definitely lots of music, but you look at uh, a lot of places around the world, they, uh, some of them only know one instrument. Some of them, uh, in China, for example, they have sets of sets of bells that uh, there's like 26 people that only play one bell, and their musicians only play one bell. They only yeah. know one instrument. They only know one category of one instrument. So, <laughs> yeah. who really knows? It all depends on what you want to do. Um, so the last question is, uh, what do you hope to do with music in the future? That one, I, uh, I'm really not sure. I have definitely kept it um, as a hobby through my entire life. Um, at the at the very least, it's always been a hobby, right? Um, as it is currently, um, I would like to. Uh, I don't know. I would definitely like to play uh, with a band again sometime soon. I For would real. love to. I would love to go out and play again sometime soon mm -hmm. um and i guess for now that's all i really can say but um on the long term i i always hope that um i always hope that i will be playing music and i always hope uh, i hope that um i could always play with a band if i wanted to nice all right well there we have it that's all the time we have for you folks it's been real